today we are going to talk about the cell theory and the cellular components. First of all, I describe that what cell theory states. Cell theory states that all living organisms are made up of one or more different types of cells. Second part, it states that cells are the basic unit of life. The third point is that all the cells arise from the pre-existing cells. That is, all the newer cells are formed by divisions in the older cells. Now we look at it, how this theory developed. Cells were first described by Robert Hooke, was the curator of instruments of the Royal Society of London. In 1656, he made a, a simple type of microscope by using different types of lenses to magnify different things. He observed in the thin slices of cork uh, some sort of cells. Now we know that he observed certain um, sort of dead cells. Later on, another person who was actually a textile merchant, he also developed magnifying lenses and by this setup, he also made a sort of microscope. Out of, with the help of that microscope, he observed different types of single cellular or we can say unicellular organisms in the pounds water. He was Leeuwenhoek. So Leeuwenhoek observed actually the unicellular organisms and Robert, Robert Hooke observed the uh, plant cells. After that, in about 1809, about 200 years later, there was a person, Lamarck, he proposed that a body is living if it consists of cells. There is another person came later, Robert Brown. He identified nucleus inside the cell. He says that cell have central part that is more dense in comparison to the other parts of cell. In 1838, a botanist named Sheldon, he actually stated the first part of the cell theory, actually half part, that all the plant cells, all the plants, the multicellular plants, they are aggregates of cells. Later on, uh, another uh, a cytologist and more precisely a zoologist, uh, an animal scientist, Siobhan stated that all animals also consist of cells. These two, uh, these two uh, theories uh, combined, uh, various other people actually looked at these and they combined to make the modern form of uh, first part of cell theory. That is, all organisms, the living organisms, consist of one or more cells. In 1855, another scientist, Virtue, described that cells only arises from pre-existing cells. That is, if there are some cells which are present, they divide and they produce the new cells. Pasteur later on uh, produced the proof for this theory, that is, cells arise from pre-existing cells. In this way, the cell theory took its current form, that is, all the living organisms consist of one or more cells. Cells are the basic unit of life and uh, all cells arise from the pre-existing cells. This is about important features of cell theory. Now we are going to do about cellular components. Cell consists of lot many components. Cell is covered, most of all of the cells are covered by a membrane called plasma membrane or the cell membrane. This membrane protects the inter internal parts of the cell. Plant cells, fungal cells and the prokaryotic cells. They also have another layer outside the cell membrane which is called cell wall. So plant cells, uh, the fungal cells and the prokaryotic cells do have a cell wall that is external to their cell membrane. A uh, cell wall is even a more protective layer uh, it's more hard in comparison to the cell membrane and uh, in part sometimes in few cells it's like that. Inside the membrane there is a plasma, a fluid that is called cytoplasm, cyto of cell, plasm, fluid. Cytoplasm is the fluid that is present between the cell membrane and the nucleus. Cytoplasm um, have a lot many components, all the organelles are there all the functions uh, like metabolism performed there and so on. Cell also have its skeleton, a framework uh, which gives cells its uh, shape, help in it in its uh, movement and set its different organelles on their place. Then comes the organelles. 
cells have organelles mitochondria nucleus itself endoplasmic reticulum golgi bodies vacuoles and a lot many more here you can see a diagram of an animal cell which shows that it have cell membrane outside then inside almost in the center you can see a nucleus then you can see surrounded nucleus the endoplasmic reticula a network um after that you can observe the golgi complex few mitochondria centrioles cytoplasm lot many other structures now we go ahead and look at these structures one by one the cell membrane or the plasma membrane it covers all the components of cell this actually gives a cell a individual cell a state of integrity or we can say that it encloses the contents of the cell in a specific environment uh, what are the functions of plasma or the cell membrane and the plasma membrane it acts as a barrier it gives protection to the cell and it allows transport of materials so the cell membrane uh, act as a barrier cell membrane is semi permeable that is it allows few molecules to pass in or go out it does not allow some other molecules to move in or move out so it means that it acts as a barrier between the internal uh, part of the cell and the external environment it gives protection to the internal parts of the cell internal parts of the cell are uh, delicate they may damage uh, in response to uh, any pressure or tension exerted on the cell a uh, cell membrane protects it separate or isolate the inner part from external environment it provides transport of materials cells need many materials that should come in or should go out on interval a uh, cell membrane or the plasma membrane is semi permeable it manages the transport of materials uh, which are required like uh, food particles which are required by the cell it allows food particles to come in uh, it allows the waste products to go out uh, in a very technical way for example cells need water a uh, cell membrane by specific channels in it allows uh, those uh, water uh, molecules to move in or move out now look at a diagram this diagram shows you different parts of plasma membrane or a cell membrane this diagram shows that the cell membrane plasma membrane as it is generally said is a fluid mosaic it is a fluid because it consists of a double layer of lipid molecules the fat molecules these fat molecules as you observe have their heads on one side and have their tails in the inner side on upper side the top you can see the extracellular part on the bottom you can see the intracellular part that is inside of the cell cell membrane consists of a double layer of lipids which give it a fluidity it's like a fluid but it also have various proteins integrated as you can see in the diagram again there are different types of proteins which are integrated at different places for example if we start from the left we can see two large proteins which are close together both are crossing the whole of the fluid bilayer that is the lipid bilayer uh, then you can see a small protein which is present down there towards intracellular side labeled as peripheral protein peripheral is present on the periphery it is present towards the inside below that you can see rope like structures which are attached to these peripheral proteins these rope like structures are the cytoskeletal elements these elements attaches to the peripheral protein and on the other side they attaches to different uh, organelles for example mitochondria nucleus maybe some else endoplasmic reticulum and they give support to those organelles because you know cytoplasm is a fluid it's a plasma organelles uh, have to be placed at uh, have to be kept at a particular particular location at least for some time and they are placed on these locations 
with the help of uh, these cytoskeletal elements. And then the cytoskeletal elements, the fibers, the ropes, as you can see, they are attached to the peripheral proteins. So cell membrane gives support to the organelles with the help of these cytoskeletal elements. You can see various different types of proteins above to which certain carbohydrate groups are attached. We call them glycoproteins. Glyco are carbohydrates, proteins, proteins which are attached with carbohydrate groups. Most of these proteins act as receptors. That is, when any molecule have to come in and give some message to that particular cell, they have to come and attach to a glycoprotein many times. So glycoproteins, they receive the signals. They are receptors of the cell. Just like that, you can see that integrated inside the cell membrane in its lower part, towards the tail part, there are cholesterol molecules. You know, this lipid bilayer is like a fluid. It needs some support. It should be uh, supported by some more strong structure. This cholesterol, uh, these cholesterol molecules, they give support and, and strength to the cell membrane. Now, in different types of cell membranes, the concentration of these uh, cholesterol molecules, that is quantity of these cholesterol molecules, may be more to less. If membrane needs, needs more strength, then there are more cholesterol molecule. If it needs less strength, there are less cholesterol molecule, uh, depending upon in which environment particular cell is living. You can see certain glycolipids. There are certain carbohydrate groups which are attached to the surface of uh, the lipid bilayer. Uh, because they are attached to the lipid, they are called glycolipid. Glyco for carbohydrate, lipids for the fat molecules. This is uh, quite a structure of the cell membrane. So, cell membrane is a fluid mosaic. Um, it allows transport of materials inside and outside and uh, it acts as a protective barrier.